Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply what we learned so far in the fluid statics concept to obtain something useful in real life. There are multiple ways of measuring the pressure. One of them is barometer. I touched upon it when we were talking about the surface tension topic in module number one. Um, that is actually a little bit on the simple side. And there is another one called piezometer tube. I would like you to go ahead and review that if you would like to. But the most comprehensive one is something called U-tube manometer. But unfortunately, this U-tube is where I post the videos, right? So U-tube doesn't work anymore. So then I call it U-shape tube manometer, okay? But the official is called U-tube manometer. So the manometry, this is a common device. For measuring time averaged pressure. The important thing here is the time average. It's very hard to measure instantaneous pressure because there's a lag in the response of a, a manometer. And the pressure is often given in terms of the length, some people call it head, correspond to the height of a fluid column. Okay, to save time. I went ahead and draw this for you. So what it does is I have a fluid in here and I'm interested in finding the pressure of it. This can be gas, it can, this can be liquid, okay? The one thing that I really need to know about this particle fluid is its specific weight. The next thing, this is how the manometers work. What happens over here is I put this fluid over here and this fluid, due to its pressure, it is pushing this and I call this gauge fluid, I'll talk about it, it's typically Traditionally, mercury has been used, but due to the safety concerns, it's not being used anymore. But it needs to be a thick or a dense fluid. I will, I will explain why. Okay, You can put any fluid that you want. And this is open, as you can see on the left-hand side. This is open to atmosphere. So the atmospheric pressure is something that I do know here, and that's a cri critical point. In some cases, in the YouTube uh, manometer, you will see this is hooked up to another kind of pipe. So I can use a differential measurement between two points. That's fine. I'll talk about those as well. So now let me explain how this works. If you look at the books, common books, they usually have some formulas. I do not really like formulas from this particular chapter. And what I do, and I'll be honest here, is in an examination setting, setting I give cases where the formula is not going to work. The reason is that in the, in the books, they give a formula, but they don't really discuss what is the underlying assumptions. What if I have several fluids, etc. The method that I want to use will be basically based on putting some uh, letters to particular points in my analysis. So the thing is, at this particular point, the, the orange colored uh, point that I have over here, the pressure is atmospheric. Okay, And you have two options. One is to use gauge pressure, one is to use the absolute. It doesn't really matter which one you use. If I have the gauge pressure over here, that will be zero, right? If I have the absolute pressure, then it will be PATM. That's fine. It's not a much harder process. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call over here B, so you can get the hints from this uh, HB. And then over here, I'm going to call this A. Here is how I approach this particular manometry question. Okay. In order to solve YouTube manometers, what we do is we start with, what, with the one column, and then we proceed and find pressures all the way to the other column where we are interested in the pressure value. Let's take a look at this point. And I want to relate this one and this one. Okay, So let's write over here. PB will be equal to 0 because that's what I picked. I choose to use gauge. If you choose to use absolute, it's going to be PATM. Now, I'm going to say plus in here, but I'm going to explain. Just give me one minute. So now, this will be Y, this will be X. I'm being consistent with my uh, coordinate axis. And if you remember, if I travel in X or Y, the pressure doesn't change. So if I'm traveling in this plane, the pressure is going to be constant. However, as we discussed, when I go down in the Z direction, my pressure is increased. And the amount of increase is equal to the specific weight of the fluid that I'm traveling in times the height that I travel down. So if I go up over here, it's the reverse of it. I will be reducing my pressure. And the amount of pressure reduction will be rho g, or the specific weight, times the height that I travel, okay? If I look at this particular case, I'll get here the specific weight of the gauge fluid 
times the HP. I do need to know the specific weight of the gauge fluid because that's fairly uh, reasonable. And I need to just measure my HP so I know my pressure at point B. Now the question is, can I relate point A and point B? And the answer is yes, and I will uh, actually explain this because this is important. So, if I go down to here, the pressure is going to increase. And if I travel like this, as I mentioned, we are traveling in a negative y direction, right? The way that we define y. So I'm traveling in a negative y direction. As I'm traveling in the negative y direction, the pressure is going to be constant, right? And then I'm going to go up over here. But as I'm going down here in this same fluid, as well as I'm going down in a particular height, and this height and this height is the same, and I am traveling in the same fluid, then this PA will be equal to PB. And I'll show you it for one time only. So let's call this point D. Let's call this point C. Okay. And I'm going to call these, these, these distances are the same. So this distance to this distance, I'm going to call this, let's call this H, just H. So then if I write my PD will be equal to PB, exact same logic. It's going to be specific weight of the gauge fluid times that H. Okay, and we clearly established that, that PC and PD have the same values, so I'm going to write it over here. And then if I go up from that, my PA will be equal to PC. Now, note, when I go from C I need to A, I'm going up, so I'm going to put a negative sign. If that's not clear to you, my recommendation to the students is this. Let's say that the pressure here is 5. Then the point... At the point A, the pressure will be it will be less than five, right? Um, so what happens is, in order to get the mathematically speaking a lower value, let's say this is three and this is five. So if I say three is equal to five, and then you can see you need to put a negative sign and a number two, right? Then I simply write specific weight of the gauge fluid times the same height because I'm going height down and up in the same. So now let's try to equate PA to PB and see what happens, okay? Now, okay, so PD will be PC, so I'm just looking this way, and then I need to pick this up and plug it into here. So let's do it. So then PA will be equal to PC, which is PB plus specific weight of the gauge times 2H. And remember, this is PC, which is PD. Then there will be a negative sign of specific weight of the gauge fluid times the height. This and this is the same. So they will cancel each other out. And then what I'm going to get from here is PB is equal to PA. But from this point on, I would like, I'm not going to be doing this over and over again. And I would like you to realize that if I'm, go if I'm traveling in the same fluid in here, okay, the difficulty or the, the confusion that I receive in the examinations and all is typically related from students go out and say that this pressure is equal to that pressure. That's not quite right. Here's the problem. In this fluid, when I'm going down, I'm going in this cross-hatch liquid, right? But when I'm going up to this point, first I go into the cross-hatch liquid, all is fine, but then I, I switch to the other fluid that I have, now the specific weight of F. So then that's going to change the dynamics. So I can only be in one fluid, okay? So the two conditions is, one, the height needs to be the same, two, I need to travel in the same fluid. As long as that is satisfied, I can simply equate the corresponding point pressures. Let me go back and continue my analysis. And from here, we said that PA will be equal to PB, and I established that in the other font that I have. Okay, then I will go, let's assume that this is the point of the pressure, and let's call this point F. And then from here, PF will be equal to PA minus, because I'm going up, it's going to be the specific weight of this F fluid, that's what I'm traveling in, times the height. Let's take a look what did I said for height. I call it HA. Now I'm going to, this green font, I'm going to relate them, okay? Note that I can simply call here PA, right? Because as PA is equal to PB, I simply can write it over here, okay? So now my PA turns out to be specific weight of the gauge fluid times the HP. Because that's what I need over here. So that will be specific weight of the gauge fluid times the HB. Okay, 
So if I rewrite this, then I'm going to get myself PF is equal to specific weight of the gauge fluid times HB minus specific weight of the fluid that I'm traveling in or that's the fluid that I'm interested in times the HA. Okay, so there's one more trick over here. If this fluid that I'm over dealing with here is liquid, I'm good. This is the equation that I have. If this is the gas, I'm still good, but there's a caveat. Just I'll explain in a minute, okay? It will be obviously applicable. But if this is this fluid that I'm interested, if F is a gas, here's what is going to happen. I'll give you an example. The specific weight, and let's say that this is air, right? It's going to be right around 12 Newton per meter cube. Typically, I use something quite heavy in the gauge because I want this HP value to be low. It's a, just a physical concentration. I don't want to have a U-shaped tube where this HP is like one story high, right? I can't really, you know, carry it. It's not really f quite feasible. So I want this HP to be low. In order to, for HP to be low, then I need to have this number big, right? If this is large, I can have this small because the multiplication is constant, right? Okay, so then I need this to be fairly heavy. And let's assume that I'm using water and typically I, I use something more heavy than or more dense than water, this is going to be 9,800 Newton per meter cube. So this is for water. And if I'm using mercury, then it's going to be 133,600 Newton per meter cube. Okay, so I'll ask you, it's okay, this formula is applicable for gases as well. However, do you really need to deal with this? Okay, just think about it. I'm multiplying this number, HP, by 133,600 and then subtracting, I don't know, 12 times half a meter. And that's kind of high anyways. So it's like the error in here is going to be 6 over 133,600. That's your measurement error will be more than that, okay? Your reading error will be more than that. Same logic can be applied for water as well. So take a look at it. This is almost 10,000. For that reason, what we typically say is if we go ahead and neglect that, I simply get a much better formula, okay? And this is what the formula is for, for gases, okay?